Hello everyone. So today we're going to simplify radicals. So since you are now capable of writing expressions with rational exponents as radicals and vice versa, let us learn how to simplify radical expressions through the help of the laws on radicals. But then I'm going to tell it to you later. What are the laws on radicals? So a radical expression is in its simplest form if Number one, no prime factor of a radicand that has an exponent equal to or greater than the index. So, we're going to discuss this one today, removing perfect and power. So, before that, let us have a recall of radicals, okay? So, if we have the nth root of a raised to the m power, so we all know that m is what we call the exponent of the radicand, which is a, okay? And then, n here is the index. If there is no index in a radical symbol, so, meaning to say, that index is 2. So, this one is what we call the radical symbol. Or the radical sign. Now, Example of number one condition, that no prime factor of a radicand that has an exponent equal to or greater than the index. Let's say we have square root of 3x. So notice that 3 is not a perfect square because here the index is 2, okay? And then the exponent of x variable is 1, which is less than the index 2, okay? Therefore, square root of 3x is... A radical in its simplest form. Another example, we have cube root of 5b squared. Okay, so 5 is not a perfect cube. And then b squared, so notice that the exponent 2 is less than the index 3. So this is, or these are radicals in its simplest form. Okay, so number 2, no radical contains a fraction. And the number 3, no denominator contains a radical sign. Now here, we're going to make use of a rationalization that is a process of removing the radical sign in the denominator. But then today, we're going to tackle first um, removing perfect n powers, okay? Or simplifying radicals and then um, rewriting that into... Um, the first condition that no prime factor of a radicand that has an exponent equal to or greater than the index. Okay, let's proceed to our examples. So, here in removing perfect n powers, we're going to make use of the product rule for radicals. Okay, the product rule. For radicals. We're in, okay, if A and B are non-negative real numbers, then the nth root of AB is equal to the nth root of A times the nth root of b. So, this is the radical or the product rule for radicals. And also here, in condition number 1, so we're going to make use of the law, wherein if you have the nth root of a raised to n, this is equal to a, or the radicand itself. Okay? So, let us have an example. Let's say, number 1. So, in simplifying radical, so we have square root of 12. So, notice that 12 is not a perfect square, right? So, perfect squares are um, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 
64, 81, 100, and so on and so forth. So, as you can see, square root of 1 is equal to 1, okay? Square root of 4 is equal to 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 25, we have 5. Square root of 36, we have 6. Square root of 49, we have 7. Square root of 64, we have 8. Square root of 81, we have 9. Square root of 100 is 10. Okay, so here, in this case, 12 is not a perfect square, right? So, what are we going to do is, we have to factor 12, where in one of its factors is a perfect square. So, here in this case, factors of 12 are 4 and then 3, right? So, since that 4 is a perfect square, so we're going to make use of the product rule for radicals. We have the nth root of AB is equal to the nth root of A times the nth root of B. So, we have square root of 4 and then times square root of 3 then let us now simplify square root of 4 is this one 2 right then since that 3 is not a perfect square so you will just copy square root of 3 so this is the answer so this is already in simplified form next number 2 let's say we have square root of 50 so 50 again is not a perfect square so what are you going to do again is we have to factor 50 where in one of its factors is a perfect square so we have a square root of 25 and then square root of 2 right so square root of 25 is 5 then since the 2 is not a perfect square so you will just copy so this is the answer 5 square root of 2 next number 3 number 3 let's say we have cube root of 81 now what are the perfect cube so we have 1 we have 8 we have 27 we have 64 we have 125 we have 216, we have 343, we have 512, and so on and so forth. So, these are the perfect cubes. Then, why? Because if we're going to get the cube root of 1, that is 1. Then, another 1. Cube root of 8, we have 2. Cube root of 27, we have 3. Cube root of 64, we have 4. Cube root of 125, we have 5. Cube root of 216, we have 6. Cube root of 343, we have 7. Cube root of 512, we have 8. And cube root of 729, we have 9. Okay? Now, since that 81 is not a perfect cube, we're going to factor 81. So, 81 can be divided by 27, right? So, 27 is a perfect cube. So, we have cube root of 27. So, we're going to make use of the product rule for radicals. So, we have cube root of 27 times cube root of 3. Okay. Then, what is the cube root of 27? So, we have 3, right? Then, this one, you will just copy that. You have cube root of 3. This is the answer. Okay. Next, how about number 4? Let's say we have cube root of x raised to 7. So, here in this case, we have variable x. So, 7 is... The exponent 7 of this radicand is not a perfect square. Why? Because if you're going to divide it by 3, there is a remainder. Okay? If you're going to rewrite that into exponential form, that is equal to x raised to 7 over 3, which is which you cannot divide it. Okay? 
That's decimal. Okay, but then, we're going to make use of the product rule for radicals. So, we have cube root of x raised to, you're going to think of a number less than 7, which is divisible by 3. Okay, so we have 6, right? Then, times cube root of x raised to the first power. If you're going to add it, we have 6 plus 1, so we have 7. Okay? Then, let us now simplify. We have cube root of x raised to 6. So, you're going to divide now the exponent 6. Divide 6 by 3. So we have 2, right? So we have x squared times the cube root of x. Number 5. Let's say we have a square root of 45 a squared b cube. Okay. So 45 is not a perfect square, right? And then we have a squared b cube. Okay. We're going to make use of the product rule for radicals. Now, since that the index is 2 here, we're going to separate all perfect square factors of the radicand. We have factors of 45, where in one of its factors is a perfect square. We have 9 and then 5, right? 9 is a perfect square. For, y, x, for a variable, we have a squared so, a squared is a perfect square. Why? Because if you're going to divide the exponent 2 to the index 2, the result is 1. Okay? That's why we have a squared here on the perfect square factors. Then, for b variable, so, 3 is not, b cube is not a perfect square. So, we're going to look for the number less than 3 which can be divided by 2. So, that is 2, right? Then, the remaining b raised to the first power is that you're going to write it here on the non-perfect square factor, okay? Then, we're going to extract the square root of this perfect square factor. So, we have square root of 9, we have 3, then, square root of a squared, we have a. Then, square root of b squared, we have b. Because if you're going to divide 2 divided by 2, we have 1 here. Okay? Then, this is non-perfect square factor, so you will just copy it. We have square root of 5b. Okay? So, this is the answer. Next, number 6. Let's say we have cube root of a raised to 6, b raised to 7. Okay. So, what are the factors? We have for variable a, we have a raised to 6 because 6 is... Or it can be divided by the index 3, right? And then how about for B variable? So we have, you have to think of a number which is less than 7, which can be divided by 3. So we have 6. Then the remaining B raised to, that is 1. So you have to write it here, okay? On the non-perfect square, uh, non-perfect cube factor. Then we have... Cube root of a raised to 6, we have a squared because 6 divided by 3, we have 2, then b. 6 divided by 3, we have 2. Then you will just copy cube root of b. This is the answer. For number 7, let's say we have a square root of 63, x raised to 9, y raised to 4. Okay, so here again. Let us factor 63, where in one of its factors is a perfect square. So, we have 9 and then 7. Then, for x variable, we have to look for a number less than 9, which can be divided by 2. So, we have here 8. Then, the remaining x 
raise to 1. Okay, write it here and then an perfect square factor, then y. y raised to 4. So 4 can be divided by 2. So this is a perfect square factor. We have y raised to the 4th power. Then, let us now extract. We have square root of 9, we have 3. Then square root of 8, x raised to 8. So we have x raised to 8 divided by 2, we have 4. Then y. 4 divided by 2, we have 2. Then, this one, we will just copy square root of 7x. So, this is the answer. Okay? Next, number 8. Last number. Let's say we have... Cube root of 128 x raised to the 5th power, y raised to the 2nd power. Okay. So, let us now use the product rule for radical. So, we have 128 factors are 64 and then 2. 64 times 2, we have 128. Then, how about for the x variable? We have x raised to number less than 5, which is which can be divided by 3. So, we have 3. Then, here, you will just write x squared. Okay? Then, how about for y variable? So, the exponent of y is 2, which is less than the index 3. So, you're going to write it here on the non-perfect square factor. So, y squared. Okay? Then, cube root of 64 is... 4, then x raised to 3 divided by 3, we have 1. Then this one, you will just copy, we have cube root of 2x squared, y squared. Okay, that's it for today. Don't forget to like, comment, share with your classmates, um, subscribe, and then click the notification button for more videos and updates. Thank you!